Well, hello everyone. It is a beautiful day at Tanglewood Nature Center. We've got blue skies, we've got puffy clouds, we've got birds hanging out by the front pond. We're lucky to have quite a few visitors coming in today. Just a gorgeous, glorious day to hike. But as always on Wednesdays, you're stuck with me, Bridget, and an animal buddy. So today, I figured we could get to know one of our longest lived animals. This gentleman is named Woody the Wood Turtle. And he is actually one of the oldest ones here. Um, setting aside Roger, the timber rattlesnake whose age I can't remember because I'm a terrible person. But Woody, we do know, is at least 34 years old. Hey, buddy! And he's not very happy with me holding him up in the air because, you know, turtles don't like to fly. Um, and it's a long drop here of a grand total of about 24 inches. So I'm going to put Woody down and we can kind of get to know him a little bit. Woody the wood turtle, what his life history is, what he's up to these days, and just enjoy basking in the sunshine today. It is absolutely stunning. And we do know our turtles love to bask. All right, so Woody, one of our older animal ambassadors. Um, usually when people think about the animals, they are always drawn to the birds and they're always really impressed to know that our owls are 13, 14 years old and they might hit 20. Well, the turtles are at least as charismatic, I think. Um, and he's in his 30s and these turtles hit sexual maturity AKA they can become turtle parents themselves between the ages of like 15 and 20. So they're pretty slow starters, all things continued, but you know, slow and steady wins the race as always. And these turtles can live to be into their forties in the wild, which is really incredible. In fact, the longest lived wood turtle on record lived to be 58 years old, which is wild. That is really impressive for a turtle that is a grand total of about nine inches long on average. Oh, Elizabeth, he's not sleeping. I picked him up in the air and then I started yelling into my phone and now he's like, what is happening today? <laughs> we haven't been able to do quite as many programs in person. Normally, Woody would be coming out and meeting first graders, second graders, third graders, fourth graders, fifth graders. So he would have met easily 900 to 1,200 kids this spring field trip season, plus gone to do turtle races at summer camp. This year has been a little quieter for him, so he's not as used to being picked up and hoisted about. But I did bring some presents for him. Uh, so these wood turtles are native to New York. Um, they are voracious eaters. They just adore to eat. They live to eat, which I have to respect myself. I agree with that philosophy. Um, these guys are omnivores. So they'll eat plants, a variety of different grasses, fruits, and vegetables. So I brought him tomatoes got some cherry tomatoes and a strawberry because who doesn't like strawberries? Um, but they don't just eat plants. They also eat meat. They will eat carrion, AKA dead stuff. Um, and they're actually fairly fast movers for turtles and tortoises. So they can really get going and they are actually able to eat small young rodents in the wild as well. So brace yourselves. I brought another really delicious element to add to his lunch. He's got two cherry tomatoes, one beautiful strawberry and what we in the trade call a pinky, which is to say, <laughs> A small mouse. <laughs> um, not very delicious to those of us meat eaters who are humans. I don't think very many of us eat mice. We usually prefer chicken and steak, uh, but <laughs> um, seafood maybe. But these guys do get protein from the pinkies. Um, we include them as part of our very charming orders of frozen mice and rats that we feed to our carnivores and our omnivores. Um, and then we thaw them out individually so that the animals can get some protein snacks. So we'll see. Hey, wake buddy. <laughs> He's like, hmm, maybe I'm awake. He's deciding. All right. So we'll see if he enjoys his feast. 
You'll notice that I picked really brightly colored foods to give him because these turtles actually have pretty good vision. Um, they're very sensitive to vibrations in the ground. Um, so probably my nice, happy educator voice right now is a little <laughs> alarming since he was just picked up from a tank and popped on the ground and now someone is yelling excitedly near him. Um, so pretty sensitive to vibrations, including sound vibrations. Pretty darn good vision. They can see bright colors. In fact, a lot of zookeepers that work with the really large tortoises like Galapagos or um, the Aldabras tortoises, which are some of the largest and longest lived, they can live to be over 200 years old. Zookeepers who work with those ginormous tortoises that can be hundreds of pounds and live over 200 years, you're not gonna be able to get them on a scale very easily if they don't wanna go. If they don't wanna go inside at the end of the night into their barn, you can't really throw a leash on a tortoise that they can drag it in, you know? Um, so what zookeepers will do is they will target train these tortoises and turtles so that they extend a really bright colored object, red like a strawberry or bright lime green, kind of like a tennis ball, um, and train the tortoises to boop it with their nose, to step forward and touch it with their nose, and then click and treat. Ta-da! And all of a sudden, you've positively reinforced your ginormous 600 pound tortoise to go step on a scale and boop a target with its nose. So yeah, they definitely can see color. Um, hence the very bright and shiny tomatoes, strawberry and pinky that I picked out for Mr. Woody. Wow, he is really not cooperating though. He does have a very cute face. It looks like E.T. to me. Are you sure you don't want to come out? Can you show the beautiful people your beautiful face? I'll talk a little bit about his shells and then maybe I'll put him down and he might change his mind. So yeah, these wood turtles, again, native to New York, um, they are a really stunning color. You can see they've got those gorgeous orange, red, rusty reddy kind of colors on the underside of their legs. Really lovely, long digging toenails there. There's his schnoz. You can kind of see his nose poking out. So he's got the little, uh, you can see his little curved beak and then like his little nostril sticking up there. Um, but his eye is like behind his elbow. I don't know if I could get good lighting to show you that. He's very suspicious of me right now. Um, but you can kind of see he's, he's like a, his head and his legs are almost a solid inch behind the extension of his shell there. Um, and then on his back end, similarly tucked in. Come on, focus. There we go. He's got a nice meaty tail tucked in there so no one can nibble him and very strong legs tucked in as well. Dun, dun, dun. That top shell is called a carapace. You can kind of see that nice long line across the edge there. That's a keel. Um, it's his backbone, his vertebrae, also sometimes called a keel. Um, when you're talking about turtles, when you're talking about chickens and birds, the keel's the breastbone in the front connected to your clavicles. So getting fancy. Um, but there you go. That nice long line, vertebrae, vertebrae, backbone. Um, and then the underside is the plastron. Um, and that undershell is effectively his breastbone, um, kind of fused together as a nice protective surface. All right, bud, give me a stroll. Come on. Um, so that shell is fabulous protection. Um, you can tell it's very easy for him to withdraw into it when he wants to. Um, and nobody's peeling him out. He's a tough guy. Um, the very cool top pattern on top of that carapace, you can kind of see one, he's covered in dirt because why not? Um, but it looks like it, the top of the shell carapace is broken into a variety of little patterns that look kind of like tree rings. Each of those is called a scoot and multiple scoots make up and cover the top of the shell. The scoots have these nice individual rings. Um, and in some species, you can count the rings and get a sense of how old the turtle is, but that's not true for every turtle or tortoise. Um, and what scientists often use the scoots for is actually figuring out the species because especially in, you know, sea turtles and stuff, um, the number of scoots on the back is a really helpful way to identify the species. Those scoots are layers of keratin. Um, so most of you probably think of keratin as being like your fingernails or your hair. Um, same material, that really tough 
protective layer there um, that grows over the bone and, a, and that helps them to be protected. So it's not just raw bone um, because a turtle's life is a tough one. You know, lots of people pick you up. Lots of tricky things can happen to you. You got to scrape your way through bushes and understory. You got to dive your way into the pond, fight off the bigger turtles like snapping turtles. So you really do need some, uh, some protection there. So as they kind of grow and age, um, their bones grow with them. So their shell grows with them. They're born with that shell inside their egg and it just grows kind of the same that our human uh, humeruses uh, <laughs> and our skulls grew as we aged. We had them inside us when we were born uh, and then they just kept growing as we kept eating. Same for turtles. So when they hatch out of that shell, they've uh, or the hatch out of their egg rather, they've already got that shell. Um, it's already all the way around them and they just keep growing. And as they grow, the scoots, that topmost layer of keratin will um, get kind of drier and more brittle and flake off and then new ones will, will grow underneath. So they have a, a nice continual protection for their bones as they grow. Wow. I have to say, this wood turtle wins all of our turtle races at camp. Like, he always defeats the box turtle. <laughs> he always outpaces the painted turtle, and he is steadfastly re refusing to wake up for me. I'm a little offended. Come on, bud. Your life is pretty easy, and I got you really nice snacks. You can do it. I mean, I can see some motion in there. He's just really being stubborn. There's an ant moving faster than you right now. Oh my gosh. All right, we'll give him another minute. What else can we share about wood turtles? Um, so I know Elaine and her sister are having fun in the comments, but anyone should also feel free to drop other questions in there about the wood turtle or about what Tanglewood's up to these days. And we can kind of chat well while Mr. Woody warms up a little bit. Um, Elaine will laugh at this. Uh, his name is Woody, the wood turtle, but somewhere along the line in the last... Oh gosh, I've been at Tanglewood for six years now. So at least within the last eight or nine years, because it existed when I was hired, someone changed his name to Woodsy colloquially. And so he had been kind of referred to by a lot of the volunteers and staff as Woodsy. So his name morphed over time, but he is rightfully and officially Woody the Wood Turtle again in the year 2020. <laughs> um, yeah. What else can we share about these wood turtles? Well, I was gonna talk about his long tail because that's a really distinctive way to recognize the wood turtles. We may have to wait for him to stick it out so that you can see it. Oh, there's an ant on you. He may not be able to feel the ant, but those shells, because they are living bone. Um, <laughs> you're right, Elaine, it's not Woodsy, it's Woody, the OG name, um, rightfully restored. Um, but those shells can feel both pain and pressure, so turtles can feel you when you pick them up um, or when a predator grabs them. Oh, Kevin, kids want to know, do turtles poop? Absolutely yes. <laughs> um, in science, we often call it scat, um, and you can learn to identify the different kinds of droppings or scat that you find on your walks in the woods or even your walks in the neighborhood, and then you can kind of get to know what animals are in your immediate neighborhood. What kind of neighbors do you have? Um, this wood turtle, because it's an omnivore eating, again, meat as well as fruits and veggies, um, has stinkier poops than some of our herbivorous tortoises do. I have found that carnivorous and omnivorous poops are a little smellier than some of our herbivorous plant-only poops. It's a great question. Um, dun, dun, dun. He's so stubborn today. Oh, he's moving just a little. Wait for it. Wait for it. There's a nose. <laughs> this might be the most suspenseful video I've ever made. There comes his head. Truly at a glacial pace here, buddy. I always think he looks like E.T. He has kind of a cute face, though. That's a pretty distinct... 
Oh my gosh, our wireless vanished for a minute and I panicked. We were finally getting to the good stuff, but don't worry. The wireless is back and Woody is sticking his head out. There we go. All right. I'm going to try not to. Um, so his cute little E.T. face is starting to poke out of his shell. And you'll notice right away, his eyes are pretty big. There we go. Um, and his nostrils are at the pretty tippy top of his nose there. Um, two little tiny holes right up at the top there. Um, and by keeping those nose holes or nostrils right at the top of his nose, it's a really good way for this wood turtle to be able to breathe but still hide when he's swimming in the water. This reptile spends part of his life on land, um, hatched out of a nest that was on land, but they spend the majority of their life in New York and Pennsylvania in the water. I mean, they're wood turtles. Like, they can definitely be in the woods. They can be on land. Um, not, not infrequently do you find them in suburbia and also in agricultural fields. So, you know, take a walk down your friend's cornfields, you may see some wood turtles. But they really do spend more time um, in aquatic environments, in the rivers, the creeks, ponds, that sort of thing, than on land. So if you're a little wood turtle and you're only eight inches long on average, um, maybe nine, <laughs> you're kind of snack sized for a lot of different predators. And so it's to their advantage to be in the water where they move faster than they do on land and to not expose very much of themselves. So they'll stay mostly underwater and just Stick that tiny nose up so just the little nostrils poke out of the water. They can take a nice big breath through their nose. Um, and the rest of their body is not exposed to predators and can be camouflaged by the dark murky water. And they can dive away as soon as they've gotten a nice big breath of air. So yeah, that's why he's got his tiny little nose, nose holes at the tip top of his skull so that he can just... Boop, stick just the nostrils out, get some nice big breaths of air, and then return to the water where he's faster and safer. Oh, are there turtles that can get out of their shell? Great question, and the answer is not while they're alive. <laughs> I don't know any vertebrates that can leave their vertebrae behind. I don't know of anybody who can crawl out of their... Uh, that's not a fun, comfortable experience. Um, so no, though that shell is on the top, the carapace, that's basically his backbone plus all his ribs melded together into one giant bone. And then on the bottom, on his plastron, that would be the front ribs and the uh, kind of clavicles and breastbone all coming together, fused. So he's pretty much enveloped in a ginormous rib cage for protection. No way to get out of it. There are some turtles with softer shells, though. Um, so there are some different shell adaptations. There's different presentations of them. Um, but nobody that can leave their shell behind. It's a really good question. And when we think about even the variety of turtles in New York, there are 20 species of turtle in New York State. And many of them have really different shells. Um, our box turtles have super tall... Um, boxy, haha, -ha, box turtle shaped shells. Um, they're nice and square. They look like moving castles. Um, and then if you compare that to our red-eared sliders that are really slender and um, very streamlined, um, and compare even that to our snapping turtles, which are fairly streamlined turtles, but they have a snapping turtle has almost no undershell. They have a very small, small, small plastron. Um, and a lot more of a snapping turtle's underbody, <laughs> their, their meaty legs and their belly, a lot more of it is exposed and not protected. And I think we can probably guess why, right? Does a snapping turtle need to be fast in the water? Absolutely. Does a snapping turtle have to worry about anyone sneaking up and eating it? Not so much. <laughs> I would not sneak up under a snapping turtle and try to tickle its back legs. And if I was silly enough to do that, I think the snapping turtle could defend itself pretty dang well by just reaching around with their glorious long neck and reminding me why that was a bad idea. <laughs> All right. 
So Woody is not eating my snacks, which hurts me, hurts my feelings a little bit, but at least we can see his beautiful face now. Let's see if I can turn around and get you get a slightly better look at him. <gasps> no, don't go back, bud. Maybe I startled him. I mentioned that their life cycle is a little bit on land and a little bit in water. Um, these turtles are very long-lived, like we mentioned, uh, easily can hit 40 in the wild. Up to 58 was the record in captivity. That's a long-lived turtle. But there are some hardships along the way, and not every wood turtle will live that long. Oh yeah, there's the turtle I know. Look at him go. Bye. He's not going to eat my snacks. Bye. <laughs> um... So these guys begin their life cycle. Well, I suppose <laughs> their life cycle may begin um, when their parents meet in the fall. Most breeding takes place in the fall months for the wood turtles. Um, and then the males kind of duke it out. They're actually pretty aggressive turtles towards each other. Uh, the males will chase and bite and fight and posture and body slam each other. Um, most of this is taking place in the water because they're more nimble there. Uh, and then kind of a male who is very successful and very high ranking will have access to more female wood turtles, which sounds like a perk, but the female wood turtles are not monogamous. They uh, will take advantage of multiple males. Um, so even if you don't win if you don't win them all, even if you're not the highest ranking male turtle in the pond, you've still got options. Don't panic. Um, so the female will mate with multiple males. And then I think it's very cool, actually. She's able to store sperm in her body so that she does, she can kind of overwinter. She can hibernate at the bottom of the pond and then be ready to lay her eggs when she is awake again in the spring. And she can store that sperm from multiple males. So in her clutch of eggs, and usually they lay between six and eight on average, but they can lay up to 16, which is bananas. Um, they will have a variety of different genes in each of those babies. So genetic diversity wise, pretty effective. Um, they're not getting any of the genetic bottleneck problems that some other, other species do. Um, so that's kind of cool. So they'll, they'll do their breeding in the fall and then everybody tucks themselves in for the nice long New York PA winter snoozing under the frozen ponds. They might tuck themselves into the mud and the muck, um, where it's a little warmer because the ice at the top will freeze and more temperature controlled underneath. Hey, buddy. <laughs> he did not like that piece of grass in his eye. Um, or they might also hide under logs or you know, tuck themselves into muskrat holes or something in the land. And then so they hibernate and they wake up in the spring and the females are on a mission to lay some eggs. They have to go look for a pretty specific habitat. Um, they like it to be kind of sandy. <laughs> They're looking for it to be within ready access of water. Um, but the females might travel as much as a mile to find the right nesting site. And they often will dig false nests. So they'll start digging and then decide, you yeah, know, this is not really where I want my young to hatch out. Um, and they'll give up and they'll find a new spot and keep digging. It might take them as long as four hours to dig a nest just a lot of labor. That's a really long time for an eight inch long turtle to be digging four hours exposed on land. Um, though <laughs> the nests I believe are between like six and 10 centimeters deep. So it's not that impressive a hole, but you know, you, you gotta do it right. You gotta take your time, no rush. So they will spend four hours digging and then laying their eggs and then refilling a 10 centimeter deep hole. Uh, and then the females return to the pond. They just say, good luck eggs, and they head on out. Um, the eggs usually hatch out later on that season. It's about 65 to 67 days later. Um, so the eggs are not overwintering. Oh, there's that meaty tail, check it out. 
So that bright orange and the really long tail is a nice way to know that you're looking at a wolf. Oh, fine, hide it. That's a really nice way to know that you're looking at a wood turtle. He is, he is not showing off today. I'm so sorry, everyone. Where is your body confidence, Woody? Um, yes, so the babies should be more or less hatched out in, in August and kind of ready to go, ready to rumble. Um, but the unfortunate thing is these eggs are quite small. They're bur buried quite shallowly. Um, and when you hatch out and you're not even the size of a ping pong ball, again, extremely snack sized. <laughs> so there were a couple studies showing that up to 80% of wood turtle eggs are eaten before hatching by raccoons, possums, coyotes, foxes, um, anybody that's around really. And then once they hatch, their hatchlings are really tiny and they're still being consumed by raccoons, coyotes, uh, even birds will eat, will eat turtle hatchlings. So if you're lucky and you're a wood turtle, let's say you hatch out and you and your five siblings decide to take on the world. Well, easily three to four of your siblings got eaten by raccoons before you hatched out. And then it's just on you, lucky buddy, uh, to try and pass on the species by dodging raccoons, cars, and people for 15 years until you are ready to lay eggs. All right, let me go catch up with my bud here. Doo -doo -doo. Hey bud. Yeah, so it's a really, it's a really difficult process for, for these wood turtles and their reproductive rate is super slow. Maybe one egg out of a clutch makes it, maybe. And then they gotta make it another 15 years before they can lay their own eggs. Um, plus the aforementioned cars, pretty brutal to turtles. Um, they don't move that fast, although you ju just witnessed him escaping me. Um, and their habitat does get fragmented because we develop you know, humans like to build roads so that we can get to our hospitals and our schools and our libraries. Pretty normal, reasonable need for humans, but difficult to explain to animals. Um, so the, the turtles do get run over pretty frequently, um, but also their habitat just gets broken up. Uh, their little ranges get split off from each other. It's, it's even harder for them to meet other wood turtles and reproduce. Um, and to some extent there is uh, theft <laughs> or turtle napping by people um, because they are really small turtles. Uh, people do occasionally take them from the wild and try to keep them as pets, which because their reproductive rate is so slow, that's just devastating. Um, to take even one wood turtle, especially an adult from the wild, um, it just like the repercussions of one pet turtle snatching for a wood turtle can be really, really devastating for a local population. In New York and in New Jersey and PA, these guys are listed as threatened. But if you look at the IUCN, which is the international organization that decides, um, you know, how the IUCN evaluates, for example, how endangered a panda is, how endangered a lion is, um, they're looking at at global populations. On the IUCN red list, these guys are endangered. That's the, uh, internationally, there's a very real concern for these turtles. Um, some conservative guesses have shown uh, that populations are declining in just about all of their native range. They might be extinct in Ohio already, I was reading, which seems kind of unlikely because Ohio's so close to us, but if true, devastating. Um, and in New Jersey, PA, New York, the state considers them threatened. So um, yeah, they're definitely a species to be worried about just because they're so slow to get old enough to have their own eggs and their eggs success rate is so low. They are really cool. So we're very lucky to have our 30 something resident at Tanglewood. There we go. Now you're really showing off for the people. Now you're racing. We do have turtle races for our summer campers, so um, they'll get to learn about all the different adaptations for the different turtle species that we have. Box turtles, painted turtles, map turtles, these guys. Uh, Bernice, our sulcata tortoise, the giant. Um, 
and then they can kind of make predictions or hypotheses on who will move the fastest. And Woody almost always wins. He's just a really fast tortoise or turtle rather. Um, Bernice is more of a, she'll move for a strawberry, but otherwise it's just kind of as she pleases. The fun thing about turtle races is that they don't go in a straight line at all. <laughs> they don't understand the race. It's pretty much just booking it in whatever direction pleases them. Oh, good question from Kevin. Did you raise Woody from the time he was in an egg? I don't believe so. I believe he was given to us um, as an adult. Elaine might have the answer on that one if she's still watching. <laughs> if not, I will find out and I will add it in the comments as soon as I, as soon as I can. All right, bud, we're wandering away from the Wi-Fi and I don't want to lose the connection again, so I'm going to bring you back. Doop, doop, doop. Again, turtles don't really fly very often. This is a little unsettling for him. Maybe you'll eat your snacks now. That could be fun. Other questions about wood turtles? Is there anything exciting I can answer? Oh, okay. Well, I can't promise that he'll eat the snacks in front of him, but I do want to tell you about another very cool thing that they do for their food. So, like I mentioned, these guys are omnivores. They like meat as well as plants, fruits, and veggies. They especially love worms, earthworms, um, which, fun fact, not native to New York, to North America at all, frankly. But these <laughs> native turtles have found a way to bring the worms to them. So rather than having to dig up the worms, they bring the worms to them. Gaw, oh, chomp. All right, get the action shot here. So when these wood turtles really want a worm, <laughs> they will stomp their feet on the ground and their repetitive motion uh, that drumming of all four feet on the ground sounds like and feels like raindrops hitting the earth. And what do worms do when it rains? They come, they come up to the surface. So these wood turtles have been observed in the wild stomping, stomping, stomping um, for up to 15 minutes at a time, which is a really long time to dance. The, most of us don't last that long, you know, for a minute song at a wedding reception 15 minutes exhausting um they will stomp their little leggies and then the worms come up and it's just a buffet for the wood turtle at that point so they have a really clever method of collecting protein when they need it wow he's chowing down on the strawberry <laughs> uh, they don't really have teeth so to speak they do have a very firm beak um, and the beak has some sharp edges, so that's what's helping him kind of carve out this strawberry right now. It's kind of a full body. Dang. Ah, the internet! Okay, we're finally back. Apologies to my coworkers who probably just heard me screaming into the void about the internet. Oh, oh. um, oh, oh, legs. I think they would, absolutely. I don't know if that they would uh, predate their own. Um, but if they were to encounter other eggs on the ground, sure, absolutely. And turtle eggs are not, uh, crunchy in the sense that like a bird or a chicken egg is. It's just kind of like a tough leathery covering. So, um, quite easy <laughs> to get into the good yolk there. Cool. Um, wow. Going to town on that strawberry. Okay, I, I keep looking at the building because the internet keeps vanishing. This is devastating. I'm devastated right now. I wanted to yell some more about wood turtles because they're amazing, and he's finally eating food with a gusto. I'm so afraid that we're just going to lose the internet forever now. Um, so <laughs> I guess I will wrap it up for now. Um, if anybody has any questions whatsoever about turtles, tortoises, wood turtles, Woody, not Woodsy, our beautiful 30-something here. Um, definitely feel free to drop them in the comments. I am so happy to answer them from my desktop. And oh my God, I'm so afraid that my phone is going to lose the internet again. All right, you get that cherry tomato, dude. You get it. <laughs> victory. Sweet victory.
a burp. All right. Well, that's a pretty good note to end on. All right, everybody. Thank you for hanging out with us. I'm so sorry about our internet connection being a little fraught today. That was kind of a bummer. Um, but definitely, if you have any questions about our animal ambassadors, about Woody, or about the Nature Center, drop them in the comments and I will reply. And my bud Woody here, he's going to have to take his last cherry tomato to go. Thanks, everyone. Hope you get to go hiking today. It is stunning outside. It's so lovely. Um, so yeah, hit the trails, walk around your neighborhood. Have a great day.